Hi Gemini, welcome to your bi-weekly love reading for December 15th through the 31st, 2017. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am the good, the bad, and the tarot. And for your reading today, I'm using the Charmin Caselli Tarot Deck as my primary tarot deck. I will be clarifying with the Chicoli Tarot Mini. And at the end of your reading, pulling a message from the Rumi Oracle by Alana Fairchild. And for those of you over on Patreon, there will be a Mini Lenormand reading at the beginning of your reading. And then we'll carry on with the rest of the bi-weekly. If you are interested in joining me over on Patreon, I'd love to have you over there. It is a way to support me. Um, different from kind of a donation because you are actually getting something in return. And there are different levels where you can pledge and so forth. If you want more information on it, I invite you to go over there and click on patreon.com slash the good friend the tarot new to learn a little bit about what I'm doing over there. Or you can also email me for more information. Links again below in the description. So, if that sounds good, let's go ahead and get started with your reading. Hi Gemini, this is your Mini Lenormand reading, and I am going to be pulling two cards for you today. I'm looking at your situation. We have the locket. Well, they're already coming out. What is influencing the locket for Gemini? What is influencing the locket for Gemini from December 15th through the 31st? What is influencing the locket for Gemini? We have the whip. Okay. So in the next frame, we're going to talk about these two cards read together. All right, Gemini, you have the locket plus the whip as your cards. And so what I'm seeing is that you are, there is something very passionate here, a passionate connection. You feel passionate for someone. I'm also seeing the possibility of sex here. So perhaps passion and sex are on your mind this month. Um... I'm definitely seeing something here. I'm also getting there could be secrets as well regarding your sex life or an illicit relationship, but I am seeing passion and sex. Yes, don't I? Hi, Gemini. This is your bi-weekly love forecast from December 15th through the 31st. Let's go ahead and get started. Spirit, what are the most important messages and energies that you have for the Sun in Gemini from December 15th through the 31st, 2017? This is their love forecast. What do they need to know regarding their love lives from December 15th through the 31st? For all Gemini suns, moons, risings, those on the cusp, and Venus in Gemini. Gemini. That was not a good shuffle right there. Uh, I don't like when the cards are like that. Let's do one more for Gemini. It's better. All right. Gemini, at the, bottom, <coughs> at the bottom of the deck, we have the Ace of Cups reversed. Might have been some kind of rejection in love here, or someone passing up an opportunity for love. So underneath that, strength reversed, compulsive behavior, weakness, feeling weakness for someone, uh, fierce hatred. Yeah. I just saw the devil reverse under there, breaking bonds, breaking agreements, love lost. Uh, of course, this is the underlying theme or challenge of your reading, all right? So it is about a rejection in love or passing up an opportunity for love, okay? Not even getting it started. Breaking off an agreement, emperor reversed, crossed by king of cups, coming up reversed. What comes below you? We have the Eight of Pentacles. What's crowning you? We have the Hangman. Recent past, you have the King of Wands. And in the near future, you have the Four of Cups. Alright. So, you do walk into the middle of December with the Emperor in reverse. 
So maybe we could have Leo or Aries in your chart, Sun, Moon, or Rising. Remember, I do read for all Gemini, Suns, Moons, Risings, those on the cusp, and Venus and Gemini. When the Emperor's reversed, there's a lack of boundaries. Also, you're favoring your emotions over logic. I'm also seeing someone here who's out of control. Very controlling behavior, almost abusive behavior. If this is you, Gemini, you gotta reel it in. Because I'd rather see this card upright than reverse. This is someone who's extremely controlling. They're out of control. Bossy, demanding, controlling. Uh, and normally it's you're taking it out on the little people. Taking it out on your spouse. Taking it out on your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your wife, your husband. Because you don't have control over your own life. If that's not the case, I'm just seeing someone here who is not uh, leading, not being a good leader. If you're the man of the house, if you are a boyfriend, if you, I'm saying masculine energy, okay, if you are the wife or the girlfriend or the boyfriend, you need to lead. You need to show leadership here. That's asking for you to have control over your emotions, use logic in this situation, maintain good boundaries, and show leadership. Lead the way. That is and there should be a balance of that. If you're in a relationship with someone and someone's out of control or not showing their boundaries or not being a good leader, then that's a problem. Your challenge is this King of Cups. Water sign, energy, Scorpio, Cancer, Pisces. He's coming up reverse. This is an emotionally unavailable person. They have intense negative feelings towards you or they are emotionally blocked. This can also indicate alcoholism, someone who is harboring intense negative feelings for you or unable to feel anything at all. Not good. Uh, if I look at both of these two together, it looks like two people out of control here. Two people who, oops, put it back this way. Two people who are possibly going through some kind of an argument or some kind of a uh, uh, what do I want to get? Stonewalling. Stonewalling each other. The root of the situation, we have the Eight of Pentacles. So, work is not being put into the situation. Someone's out of work. Someone isn't working on it. There's a lack of commitment, a lot, lack of focus. Um, and possibly financial issues here. We'll have to go in and clarify that. In your past, we have a King of Wands in reverse, Leo, Aries, Sagittarius. This person also is unhappy. In fact, when I see the King of Wands in reverse, I'm seeing possibly Sagittarius male, Aries male energy. Could be female, doesn't matter. But point is, fire sign energy here. This person is holding a grudge. They're very angry. They have repressed uh, lust or lusting after someone. They can't have what they want else. Um, they may uh, go out of their way. They're, they're being too nice in the relationship. This person can be too nice in the relationship. They do everything to make the other person happy, but they're going, they're bending over backwards. They have no boundaries. They have no limits. Okay. They could also be aggressive here. Someone done, did something in an aggressive manner and hurt the other person. Okay. This is an aggressive man. He will use you to get what he wants. So watch out. This is in the past. So this influence is leaving. I do see someone here who is very controlling or because he's on his sitting on his head here, someone who has lost control of their own situation. All right, they're favoring emotions over logic. Too emotional. Not enough good boundaries, not enough control over their own life. In your thoughts and feelings, Gemini, you have the hangman. So you're unwilling to let something go. This is someone who is ruminating, they're thinking a lot about the situation, but they're refusing to change. It's a charlatan, it's someone who is spiritually insightful, but unable to bring those spiritual insights into their own life. This can also indicate enlightenment, uh, seeing things from a new perspective. But you're still waiting around. You're still thinking about something. You haven't actually done anything about it. Um, 
it kind of reminds you of someone who thinks that they're better than the other person and they expect the other person to change. They don't have to change because they're already fine. But that's not the case because I see two people here who are imbalanced and have issues with each other. Um, going into the near future, you have the Four of Cups reversed. So this is some kind of restlessness, looking for a sign, you've withdrawn emotionally for a long period of time, and you're now getting a little bit antsy. You're thinking, is this person coming back? Am I gonna, when am I going to see this person? When is this person going to reach out to me? Um, emotionally, you may be getting offers left and right, but you're not interested in that because you're still focused on the past. So either way, this is some kind of stagnation and apathy emotionally, and it's making you restless. I'm seeing someone who's like, nope, 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 not good enough, pouty, looking for a specific response from someone, a specific action to be taken, and yet you are getting offers, or you are getting, this person is trying to put an effort, but you're, you're, it's not what you want, so it's not good enough for you. I do see this cup ending up being rejected, so there is going to be some kind of passing up an opportunity for love here. Some kind of a rejection. You're breaking off some kind of agreement with someone because it's not good enough for you. You don't fail. Okay. Let's go ahead and clarify this Emperor in reverse. We have the Six of Pentacles in the past. High Priestess. Why is the Emperor coming up reverse for Gemini? Give me one more card. Two of Wands. Twos, twos, twos. This indicates this choice. This indicates a decision needs to be made here. You have the Six of Pentacles. It talks about giving and receiving. You were giving and receiving in your relationships in the past. Things were even. Things were fair. Now I see someone who is keeping a secret or holding on to some information. There's an inner knowing here. So, a little bit... Uh, Something, you know something, but you're not saying something. You saw something, but you're not saying something. You're choosing to remain silent. Two of Wands. You're making a decision. You have options, Gemini. You're, just, you're deciding right now what you want to do. You feel you, have, you feel you have a choice to make. Why is this King of Cups coming up in the challenge position? Why is this King of Cups challenging Gemini? I saw this card before. Seven of Pentacles. What is this King of Cups? Who is this King of Cups reversed? Why is this King of Cups reversed here? Or who is this King of Cups reversed? The sign of why is this King of Cups reversed here? And the Ace of Pentacles. Yeah, so this King of Cups is reversed because they were evaluating the situation as well. Yes, they got some stuff done with you. Yes, they feel like they've gotten so far with you in the past, but they are evaluating the situation, waiting for you to make a move. Son, this person is, you know, this person has a lot of admirers or this person is coming across as someone who is getting a lot of attention the sun is also the sign of Leo. This this is someone who could be acting very childlike. But I see that this the sun is positive, it's happiness, it's clarity. So this could also just be someone that has water sign, sun, moon, or rising, it's telling me. A new beginning. This person wants a new beginning with you. Um, they want a fresh start. I mean they're going in the direction of having a new beginning anyway. Okay? There we go. Why is the Eight of Pentacles coming up reversed for Gemini? Why is the Eight of Pentacles? Ooh, we have the Ace of Swords in the past. 
Why is the Eight of Pentacles coming up reversed for Gemini? Justice. Queen of Cups. Again, Water Sign Energy, Scorpio, Cancer, Pisces. This could be a work situation or having to do with some kind of karma. I do see in the past there was communication or someone cutting to the chase, revealing the truth, speaking the truth, cutting someone off. We have justice, emotional detachment, marriage, contracts, etc. The Queen of Cups comes in. This is someone who is in love, very connected to their emotions, um, very watery energy, receptive energy. I'm seeing feminine energy here. You may definitely be dealing with a, fem a female water sign, Scorpio, Cancer, Pisces. Okay. Gemini. Um, Gemini, why is the hangman coming up reversed in your thoughts and feelings? It feels like you're stuck in your head here a lot. Gemini, why is the hangman coming up reversed in your thoughts and feelings? Nine of Swords. Judgment. Judgment Day, huh? Making a final decision. You're just really thinking about something here. You want to make sure you're right. Lovers. Oh yeah, this is a big decision. This is your. Either you're dealing with your soulmate here. You're dealing. You're making a very big decision. Head or heart decision. Because we have the Nine of Swords. You're worried about something here. You're worried. Ruinating. You have judgment here. So this final decision is going to set you free from your past. It's going to allow you, this is the key, this decision is the key to your love life, really. And you do have the lovers here, so you are thinking about your soulmate, you are thinking about making a head or heart decision. What do you do in the future? We have the Four of Cups reversed. What you do in the future is the Four of Cups reversed. Why is that? Well, we have the Four of Cups again, so someone is taking a time out here. Seems like you're not interested. Maybe this offer, for some reason you're not interested in this offer. Because you're thinking about it, but you have the Nine of Wands. Why is the Four of Cups in reverse? And the Five of Swords. Either you're dealing with another fire sign or you are... The Nine of Wands is someone who... <laughs> No, not a player. Someone who likes to have fun, though. Someone who... Passionate. Adventure. They want movement. Travel. Okay. More lighthearted energy. If you... If this person was a king, they're going back down to a knight. Someone who just wants to have fun. Someone who uh, wants adventure. Five of Swords. You know what this is, some kind of a defeat here. Alright, so you are going to be victorious, but you are maybe hurting someone at the end of the day here. This is your energy, the swords energy. Cups, wands, and swords. The five of swords tells me you want to win at any cost. And so in order to maybe conquer the heart of your love interest, you feel that uh, it looks like you're, taking, you're sitting this one out, Gemini, for whatever reason. All right, well, it looks like you're going to be either rejecting someone's offer here or you're both too stubborn to kind of admit anything to each other. I just swear it's not the best card in the future here. It's telling me someone's going to get hurt. No, there are no winners. Divine discontent. This is your oracle message. Care to listen to the whole reading? Uh, this message will be five to seven minutes, so prepare yourself now. <laughs> All right.
right, uh, so you have number 12, Divine Discontent, and there's a short poem at the beginning, and then we'll get into the meaning of this card. It says, Winter falls upon us, so spring can bring new growth. Cry the tears, allow the longing, sadness brings surrender and a deep desire to be free. Rumi. I know your heart. I hear it breaking and groaning in darkest night when you imagine yourself to be silently cast adrift in sleep. It speaks to me, that sacred heart of yours, whispering its longing and bemoaning its divine discontent. It knows when something is amiss. It senses that something is not quite right as yet. There is a piece of the puzzle missing. Even in, it, in its tremendous gratitude for all that is, and there is much gratitude and sweet appreciation in that precious heart of yours. There is a murmuring, a questing. It cries out to heaven, Vouchsafe me a blessing. I cannot go on. I am broken and in need of your tenderness for healing. I am empty and in need of filling, not with stuff and bits, but with the most precious nectar of divine fulfillment. Nothing else will satisfy me. Please, please restore me to wholeness. I can bear this missing piece, this broken disarray, no longer. I listen and I cajole that wise heart of yours. I praise it for its honesty and longing, for the longing is an irresistible perfume to the beloved attracting the only salve that will soothe the divine discontent of your truth-speaking heart, that of divine presence, absolute and unquestionable. There is a sense within you, perhaps quite obvious to your conscious mind, or perhaps only dimly registered as an unnameable underlying sense of anxiety, that something in your life is not quite right. It may be the sense, even amongst so much gratitude, of a yearning yet to be met, a longing yet to be fulfilled and satisfied. This is the pain of the awakening heart. That heart is capable of bliss and ecstatic reverence for the sheer beauty and wonder of creation. Yet, as the, as the heart matures, there will be a process of deep, passionate longing that awakens for the divine. It is the impatience for the caress of the great lover. For the presence of the divine to come to you. Over time, that longing will grow from a mild inner sense of incompleteness needing to become whole. It will develop into a holy fever, a sacred rage, a stamping of dancing feet, a pounding of fists upon the altar, and a longing so deep and distressing that one may well break into tears at the impossibility of bearing the pain of apparent separation for even a moment longer. Where is my beloved? cries the awakening heart. I call for my beloved and yet I am here, still waiting. I can stand this no longer. As devotion grows and passion for the divine intensifies, so too does this yearning. So much so that this may come to feel as though your heart is breaking for the divine. Or perhaps you are not quite there yet. Your heart is, is attached to smaller gods, such as your status, your job, your lover, your body looking a certain way, or being able to live your life in a particular way. These smaller gods are not necessarily an issue, yet you have drawn this oracle, and so it is guidance for you that the divine wants to draw you closer. Sometimes that means we will have the meager meal rested from our hand, so we, so we may feast upon something far more delectable and grand. The divine is a fiercely possessive lover. If there is a face of another beloved preventing you from longing for the divine embrace, and if you cannot see that it is the divine beloved within your lover that you are loving, well then, something will be done by heaven. So make your relationships sacrosanct. Seek the divine in all things. When you cannot, when the power of lesser gods has you in its grip, acknowledge it. Bear witness to it. Do not chastise. Instead, be truthful. Let your heart break and lie prostrate on the floor, hands clutching and head bowed as though only your sadness and plight could stir the heart of the Divine Beloved into descent of succor, succor and grace, 
saving you from a life far too bland for your exquisite Epicurean palate. Just don't misinterpret the pain and think that something really is wrong. If you are surrounded by status and money and cannot understand why you should mourn, it is even more important that you allow yourself to do so. Mourning is to be felt. Understanding is not so relevant. But if you must seek understanding, then know this, dear blazing angel. You are just waking from the deepest slumber, and with your awakening heart you are realizing a truth. A part of you, deeper and wider, faster and more instinctive, truthful and intelligent than your mind, is lonely for the divine embrace. This is right. This is sensible. This is sanity. It is the pain, the real noble pain of the heart that says, there is something more than this inadequacy, this settling for plastic instead of precious gemstones, that must end now. I cannot be fed by pixelated sunsets and animation upon my computer screen. I yearn to be blasted by so much radiance and beauty, by the real thing, that I become stupefied. I must witness so much divine splendor that all I can utter is some incoherent grunt, my mind dissembled and my heart ignited by the presence of my beloved. I want to become a fumbling ecstatic wreck in the presence of my beloved. I want to allow this pain, this yearning, this divine discontent to guide me to my holy lover so my life may never be the same again. And so it shall be. The discontent divine growing within you is the beginning, not the destiny. Do not resist it. Witness it. Do not dismiss it, trying to cover up its smell with rose petals. Let your rank discontent be the pathway to, to divinity. Look beyond what is, what has been prized and treasured, and is now found to be plated and not the precious gold it was once esteemed to be. Don't be scared, for you are my sidekick on this great holy adventure. I am here, you see, just around the corner. I have you in my sights, though you may not see me yet. I am holding a loaf of fresh bread, hot from the kitchen of the Creator, hoping to entice you with its wafting scent, tempting you to follow me on towards something of far more substance. If you are still stuck on pine-scented air freshener, imagining it is anything akin to the wild scent of the pine forest for real, then how can I tempt you? Let the stench be the stench, then the fragrance of God can be discerned, and together we can leave what is less behind, once and for all, grabbing like hungry school children, for the divine bread with sweet fresh scent filling the air. Sacred Honoring Ritual Place one hand on your heart and one on your belly. Say the following aloud. Rumi, who loves me unconditionally, guide me now. I acknowledge the gratitude in my heart, genuine and fierce, and I acknowledge the hunger for the divine unfolding in my belly. The urging forward towards some unknown, indescribable sacred satiety. Satiety. Guide me to the holy table where the true feast awaits. I am no longer satisfi satisfied by stale crumbs or the remnants of another's feast. I want to feast with the Holy One, the Great One, to know directly and for myself that I am divine. With your mercy, grace, and wisdom, guide me there. Dearest brother of my soul, I cast my soul into your care and follow my nose. I follow my nose towards the sweetest scent of the Holy Feast. Rest or stand up and dance your prayer. Just be with your body and how it wants to be, to rest or to move now. Whatever you choose, stay with your breath and with what feels truthful. Say aloud, I release that which is not worthy for my soul to feast upon. I do not decide this for myself from a place of distrust or judgment. I surrender my attachment and I trust in the sacred workings of life to present to me what is needed. I surrender. I surrender in sacred trust. I surrender. 
May my life be governed by love for the greatest good and in holy service to love now. So be it. You have finished your sacred honoring ritual. Thank you so much for allowing me to read for you today, Gemini, and I send you off with many blessings, love and light.